If you're looking to start the next big thing and you're not sure where to start, look no further than some of the trendiest fashion labels over the past couple of decades. What do brands like Ed Hardy, Von Dutch, and Skims all have in common? They all managed to find that secret sauce. But y'all already know if there's a money secret, we're gonna help uncover it. Let's look at some of the trendiest names in fashion and how they managed to find success so you can incorporate their techniques into your own business. And these techniques can be applied to any business. It doesn't have to be a clothing line. Now, when I am thinking about the trendiest fashion brands over the past couple of decades, the very first thing that comes to mind is Juicy Couture. You have to remember Juicy Couture, right? They were vibrant velour tracksuits, rhinestones, fitted t-shirts, accessories. Juicy was pretty flashy. It was hard to miss. I even dug this little gym out of storage, my daughter's baby bag. Point proven, Juicy was big in the early 2000s and the company made $605 million its peak year and had over 100 stores. How'd they do it? Before it was bought by Liz Claiborne, Juicy was run by its two founders and they didn't have the funds for marketing, so they gifted tracksuits to celebrities. Nowadays, with social media, influencer brand partnerships, celebs being sent free stuff is common. But in the early 2000s, this was a relatively new concept. And even better, the brand was born at a time when the public was more focused on celebrity life than ever before. Us went from being a monthly publication to weekly in 2000. Perez Hilton's blog launched in 2004, and TMZ came about in 2005. It gave access to the lives of celebs in a way that the public hadn't really experienced before. Seeing tabloid photos of popular celebrities of the time like Paris Hilton, Britney Spears, doing everyday things in their neighborhoods while rocking their velour jumpsuits, that helped catapult the brand to the top. All right, what can we take away from this? Yes, obviously getting a celeb to provide free endorsement for your brand is huge, but every brand out there is trying to do that these days. The real key is to pay attention to the bigger picture of what is happening in the world around us. What are people into? Yes, it was great for Juicy Couture that Paris Hilton and Lindsay Lohan and the likes were wearing their clothes. But if it weren't for the focus shift in media that made access to celebrities more prevalent, no one would have seen them wearing it in the first place. Find the new thing the public is obsessed with and find a way for your brand to capitalize on it. A good example lately would be Tick Shop and the increase of consumers shopping directly on social media platforms through integrations with the social apps. Well-positioned images of must-have items adds up to big bucks for companies. Celebrity Partnerships brings to mind the king of early 2000s trendy wear, Christian Adige. He was the man behind the success of some of the fashion crazes you might remember, like the Von Dutch trucker hat or the vibrant printed t-shirts of Ed Hardy. I wanna chat about Ed Hardy specifically though. This was another brand made popular by the celebrities who wore it. Think like Madonna, Fergie, Britney Spears again. This was also a hit brand of the era until Adige struck a deal with John Goslin. Do you remember him from John and Kate Plus Eight? It was this reality show following the lives of these two parents and their eight kids. Well, during their very public divorce, America was not overly fond of John Goslin. He was partying with models and just living life in a way that people didn't like, all the while wearing his Ed Hardy, which is very prominent. America didn't love it. The brand tanked and started being seen as divorced dad wear. I want to bring this up on the tail end of the Juicy Couture topic, just to really drive home a point. Your business's success cannot solely hinge upon who is wearing your brand, particularly in the early days, because their fate could become your own. Just look at that hit Adidas took with all the Kanye drama last year. Granted, Adidas is a large brand and they're equipped to recover from partnerships gone wrong, but even still, the company reports a $540 million loss from that deal. Remember that a successful marketing plan has a strategy that includes a diverse marketing mix. Essentially, don't put all your marketing eggs in one basket. All right, let's shift up to the 2010s. When I think of this era, I think of visco girls and internet culture taking over. I think of streetwear making its big comeback. And of course, who could forget Normcore? 
But the biggest trend that comes to mind, which has sort of become a lifestyle at this point, is the rise in athleisure wear. The idea of athleisure wear wasn't new, it had been around for decades, but the brand that many credit to helping drive the modern craze is Lululemon. It's been around since the 90s and it's this yoga inspired apparel brand and yoga studio, but it really gained traction in the 2000s. Lululemon's founder wanted to build a community around a healthy lifestyle and their first location in Vancouver did just that. Customers could learn about healthy living, they could buy their organic snacks and get personal shopping advice. The founder trained his store staff on the philosophy of personal selling, creating a unique shopping experience that worked. While the pricey leggings were alienating and unattainable to a big chunk of the population, others saw it as the lifestyle to aspire to, and the company grew through the early 2000s. They went through a bit of a rough patch in the 2010s, due in large part to the controversial comments made by its founder before he was finally asked to step down from his role as CEO. Despite it all, the company has a net worth now of over $48 billion. Lululemon's success came from the idea of building a community, a lifestyle for consumers to aspire to. They didn't wanna be another Nike or Adidas with athletes bartering for brand deals. They wanted to promote a healthy lifestyle and they built their strategies around that concept. When they were tossed curveballs like a CEO who doesn't have media discretion or a pandemic, the company shifted its approach while still staying true to that core value. They launched an online hub during the pandemic that showcased Lululemon ambassadors leading workouts and mindfulness techniques continuing to honor their idea of maintaining mental and physical well-being during times of adversity. Those are our key takeaways here. Build a community around your brand, a lifestyle for your audience to aspire to, but also be ready to pivot when the need arises without having to have an entire brand identity crisis to do it. And rounding out our list is Savage X Fenty, founded by Rihanna in 2018. Following the success of her skincare line, Savage X originally started as a women's lingerie brand and has since evolved to include sportswear, a men's line, and more. The brand decided to see body inclusivity as not just a popular buzzword, hashtag, or an afterthought, but as a part of their ethos from day one. The brand was meant to include, as opposed to adding an inclusive component later on, like when brands eventually decide to expand to plus sizes, instead of having those in their mix from the very beginning. The company also embraced innovation early on, utilizing AI and VR to help personalize the customer experience. In stores, guests can get what the company calls a fit experience, which is a fitting room experience that scans your body to recommend the best fit and make product suggestions. Savage X was a direct contrast to the glossy Victoria's Secrets of the world that had long dominated the space, and this fact resonated with people. Victoria's Secrets runway shows featured the Victoria's Secret angels, all fitting the beauty standards the company had been marketing for years. In contrast, Savage X featured women of varying sizes and ages that didn't necessarily fit the idea of traditional beauty that Victoria's Secret was trying to push. They now have an annual televised show packed with celebrity appearances and musical performances. In 2019, Victoria's Secret canceled their annual show and added their first plus size model to its ads. Savage X makes about $17 million annually. Our big takeaway from Savage X is the value of inclusivity and innovation. Remember that celebrity does not always necessarily equal success in business. Putting a focus on ensuring people of all shapes and sizes could look and feel good in the brand was important for them. Once you've chosen your target audience, make sure that your products will appeal to people across that audience. And don't shy away from innovating. Having one successful day or month or even year doesn't mean you kick back and relax and put the business on autopilot. You should always be listening to your customers, paying attention to what they want or need, and preparing to evolve in ways that can help meet those needs. To be clear, I'm not suggesting that it's possible to please everyone. The top picks on Netflix proves that. They've never, not once, nailed that. 
recommendation for me personally. But anyway, what I'm suggesting is that feeling included matters and consumers are more likely to share a brand with others if that brand makes them feel valued. Everyone wants to feel like they matter. All right, let's wrap things up with a quick recap with the six big lessons that I want you to walk away with today. And remember, you do not need to be launching a fashion brand for these tips to help. One, pay attention to the bigger picture of what is happening in the world around us and find ways to leverage that to your business's advantage. Two, remember to keep a good mix in your marketing efforts. Three, build a community around your brand and promote a lifestyle that people want to be a part of. Four, be prepared to pivot at a moment's notice. It's impossible to predict the curveballs that may be tossed your business's way. Five, know your audience and find ways to ensure your products will appeal to folks across that audience. Six, embrace innovation. Complacency doesn't lead to continued growth and success. I know these trendy brands can make it seem like the businesses found success overnight, but everything takes time, particularly if you want to build something sustainable. A little planning goes a long way. Make sure you think through your moves strategically and then get out there and make it happen. I can't wait to see what you build. Thanks for watching Control Finance. If you're feeling inspired but are still in the idea phase of your business, don't worry, my fellow nerds and I have you covered. Check out our small business hub at nerdwallet.com that has everything you need to get that business idea out of your head and out into the world. I'll see you there.